Breaking tonight, new questions after transcripts of Jim Comey's closed door meeting with lawmakers are released to the public. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. We are following several major developing stories for you tonight. The release of the Comey transcript, the latest details in the Mueller investigation, and President Trump's announcement that his chief of staff, John Kelly, is leaving the White House. We've got a stellar guest lineup standing by to tackle all of the breaking news with Congressman Jim Jordan, Congressman Darrell Issa, Michelle Malkin, Tom Fitton, Dan Bongino, to name a few. Plus, my opening statement straight ahead. But first, let's start with Fox News senior producer for Capitol Hill, Chad Pergram, on all the latest and the newest details of the Comey transcript. Good evening, Chad. Good evening. On 245 occasions, former FBI Director James Comey told House investigators either he didn't know, didn't recall, or couldn't remember things when asked. At the end of the session yesterday, Comey said they rehashed Hillary Clinton's emails, but frankly, there was not a lot of that in the transcript. The key com number to recall tonight may not be 245. Four, that's the number. Here's the most significant part of the transcript. Comey said the FBI, quote, opened investigations on four Americans to see if there was any connection between those Americans and the Russian interference effort. Those four Americans did not include the candidate. That means President Trump. At different points in the interview, Comey defended special counsel Robert Mueller. He said he admires Mueller, said he would bet his life, that's a quote, that Mueller would do things the right way. Comey says he doesn't even have Mueller's phone number and that they aren't friends. Now, there's been a lot of criticism directed at former FBI agent Peter Strzok, his text messages, and whether or not he had anti-Trump bias. Comey told House members that it was Strzok who helped him draft the October 28, 2016 memo about Hillary Clinton. The Clinton campaign says that memo is why they lost the election. So Comey says it's hard to believe that Strzok was in league with Clinton and against Trump. Comey said yesterday in the hall and behind closed doors on Capitol Hill that he had confidence in the FISA process and the warrant to surveil Carter Page. But when asked who would sign off on the investigation of a major political campaign, Comey said he didn't know. Comey also said that he felt that President Trump asked him to halt the probe during their February 2017 meeting. Comey says that's why he wrote his memorandum. In addition, Comey says that President Obama did not ask him to investigate the Trump campaign. Now, this isn't over. Comey appears before the committees again on December 17th. Also, former Attorney General Loretta Lynch is due within a few days for an interview. Still, many conservatives aren't satisfied with this investigation. Republican Florida Representative Matt Gates says the way the committees handled this reminded him of, quote, the death rattle of Republican oversight. Janine? All right, Chad, thanks so much. My sure. next guest serves on both the House Judiciary and Oversight Committees, and he had a front row seat for Jim Comey's closed door testimony. Congressman Jim Jordan joins me now. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, all right, so you were in the room at the time, yep. uh, 245 times. Comey, who was the head of the FBI, in one of the most important cases in American right. history, a FISA warrant that was funded by the Clinton uh, campaign and Hillary Clinton to spy on someone working in the Trump campaign, and that's the least of it, uh, says he doesn't really know or remember that part of it. Did you believe right. him? Well, you're right. 245 times he says, don't remember, don't recall, and don't know. What I was most, I guess, the biggest takeaway for me was the don't know part. Specifically, he didn't know much about Christopher Steele, the guy who they used his work product, the dossier, to go get the warrant to spy on the Trump campaign. He didn't know. He never met Chris Steele didn't know the relationship that Christopher Steele had with Bruce Orr, specifically that Christopher Steele was passing information to Bruce Orr, who was then giving it to the FBI. Didn't know that Christopher Steele was terminated for talking to the press. Didn't know he had talked to the press. Didn't know they continued to work with Christopher Steele after he had been terminated and continued to get his information. So I was mostly struck by that. Here's the key player, the guy who wrote, put together the dossier that was the basis for getting the warrant. 
and you didn't know anything about him? I find that hard to believe, but that, that was, uh, those were his answers yesterday. Well, you know, clearly he and his lawyer went over all of the areas where he could possibly contradict himself from other hearings, other sworn testimony, from his book, and a number of interviews. But for a case of this significance, when he actually went to the President of the United States to talk about an unverified dossier, he, so from the time that he heard about it, the time that he approved the warrant uh, in the FBI, and he had to do it, you and I both both know it at least two, uh, if not three or four times. Right. He goes to the president, talks about it, and never says to his staff, gee, where do we get this from? Who's this guy, Christopher Steele? You and I both know from the public information that Christopher Steele was paid uh, by the FBI for other information. He was a confidential informant. Right. I mean, They'd... is there any way to get this guy in any kind of uh, jeopardy for perjury and lying? Well, no, I think you make a good point, because remember, on January 6th of 2017, he goes to New York and briefs President-elect Trump about the salacious and unverified dossier. So he thinks it's important enough to brief the President-elect, but yet he doesn't know anything about the guy who wrote it, doesn't know that, for example, Christopher Steele told Bruce Orr, who then told the FBI that Christopher Steele had said he was desperate to stop Trump from being president. That was what Bruce Orr conveyed to the FBI. He doesn't know any of that information, but yet he's going to brief the president-elect about this. And as we know, what happened after that meeting on January 6th in New York, it was quickly leaked. CNN and BuzzFeed all then printed the entire dossier for the public to see. So me, that, that to me was hard to, hard to figure out. Like, how did you not know this, anything about the guy who was your main source well, for this whole thing? It's not only that, Jim. Listen, it, you know, anybody who has been a prosecutor, who's the head of the FBI, uh, he, he is a political operative. And I'm going to talk about this in my open in a few minutes. But I guess one is left with Jim, and, and, and this is nothing on, on you because you fought so hard, but one is left with certain questions like, will the Clinton ever be held accountable? Will Jim Comey, yeah. who decided to, and who was insubordinate, according to the, the inspector general, by jumping into the attorney general's shoes and saying, I'm going to exonerate her, no prosecutor would try the woman, is he ever going to be held accountable? Uh, the Clintons, what about the Russia collusion? You guys, yeah. with all due respect, to get to this guy now, two or three weeks before the beginning of the year, I'm embarrassed for you. No. I really am. Look. No, look, look, it should have happened a long, a long time ago. So why and what, didn't Frank, it? Jim, well, why I'm didn't not, it? I'm, You're a fighter. I'm not the, I know, and we've been pushing for it. And, we're, and I'll tell you what we're pushing you, for now, Judd. Jim, well, who stopped ultimately, you? Ultimately, it's the House leadership and it's the chairman Paul who decide Ryan. these things. But, but remember, Judge, what we have to do in the next few weeks is we have to get Rod Rosenstein in front of us. Because remember, it's now been almost 12 weeks since it's, it, the New York Times reported that Rod Rosenstein said to subordinates in the Justice Department that he was thinking about wearing a wire to record the president yeah. and thinking about invoking the 25th Amendment. And we've yet to, yet to ask him question one. So that's the most important thing, in my judgment, over the next three weeks before this Congress ends, is to get Rod Rosenstein in, just like James Comey was yesterday, and so ask him those it. questions. Do it. You yeah. guys come on and you talk about it all the trust time. Me. And Jim, you know Matt, I love you, but enough of this nonsense. The, the American judge, trust, public has trust, had it with you guys. Trust and me, look, Mark Meadows, Matt Gates, and I are pushing to get that done. We are pushing every well, single day to get that Ryan. done. But you we, know, can't, said, we can't issue the subpoena. Okay, I said uh, right with uh, Obamacare, Ryan should have been gone, and I took a lot of heat for it, and that was a year and a half ago or whatever it was. All right, this guy doesn't have the president or American people's interest at heart. Let me ask you one more question. Sure. So, uh, Jim Comey decides that he's going to come out of the meeting with the president, take all these notes, leak them to his friend right. at Columbia Law School as a non-government employee. I mean, this sanctimonious, holier-than-thou, egomaniac who has to be at the center of everything. He's used to keeping this stuff close to the vest because he's part of and in charge of the deep state, and he's going to get away with it, isn't he? Well, we'll see. One of the things that did happen yesterday, too, is I asked him that, that, that meeting when he had with the president in February where the president says, could you see your way clear to, to, to you know, make sure Mike Flynn is okay? And Comey goes back and he memorializes that, becomes part of the Comey memos. He then has a meeting with his top people, McCabe, right. uh, Baker, his top people. And I asked him yesterday, I said, why didn't you, if you're so concerned about this, you have to memorialize it. And as you say, Judge, he later leaks it to Daniel Richmond in the New York Times. Right. If you're so concerned about what the president said, why didn't you share it with the attorney general? Why didn't you share it with the top law enforcement individual in our government? 
And his answer was, oh, well, we thought Jeff Sessions was going to be recusing himself so at some point. So what? He hadn't recused exactly. himself at that point. He had not. And, and like, share that information. But I think it points to Comey, the same way he handled the Clinton investigation and took it away from Loretta Lynch. He and his cabal at the FBI, they were the ones in control. They wanted to keep this information tight. He wanted to create a record to, to promote this idea that there may have been some obstruction. I don't think there was, but I think he was trying to generate and create this and didn't share it with anyone at the Justice Department, the top people in our uh, in law enforcement in our government. Some sanctimonious, arrogant, condescending individual, and I know him. Congress, not you. Congressman Jim Jordan, thanks so much for being with us tonight. You bet, Judge. Thank All right. you. All right. Damn take Judge Janine. Congressman Darrell Issa, who serves on both the House Judiciary and Oversight Committees, was there for Comey's testimony yesterday and joins me now. Congressman, what struck you in that room yesterday with Comey pontificating to you guys? Well, I guess unless he's got early onset of Alzheimer's, there's no way you can, you can write two things. Either he wasn't doing his job and he just didn't pay any attention, or he just perjured himself about all the things he didn't, he didn't know or didn't remember. And by the way, saying you don't remember when you do, or saying you didn't know when you do, is in fact perjury. And that's what I think is really in the long run going to be recognized about him is that his, his, he did a lie of amnesia rather than in fact simply not telling us the truth. But you know, Congressman, as you leave Congress, you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, the last few weeks that you've got, uh, I, I don't know if you heard me with Congressman Jim Jordan, but, uh, but I, I have did. to tell you, I am embarrassed, I am furious, I am frustrated the American people have had it. You guys were in power, and it's not on you because I've seen you in oversight and, gov and, uh, uh, and government reform. I've seen you go after people. What can the American people expect going forward? Will the Clintons ever pay for what they did, which was the real Russia collusion? Will we ever find out who did the unmasking of people like Michael Flynn? Will anyone like Samantha Power and the rest of them be held accountable? What do we have to look forward to? Well, if people will recognize that some people in Congress did their job and they were thwarted often by the leadership that wanted to maintain their majority, that majority being gone now, then they won't do it again. They'll realize that standing on principle and doing the right thing may or may not cost you the majority, but playing this sort of prevent defense, to use a football term, will inevitably lead to your losing the majority without getting the job done. Jim Jordan, uh, Mark Meadows, and others have been fighters for the last two years, but they've fought with some hands tied behind their back. Okay, so let's talk about Paul Ryan. I mean, what what was what? How did it is it, how did it advantage Paul Ryan to not allow you guys to bring uh, uh, contempt charges to do this earlier? I mean, was he working against the president? No, he wasn't working against the president. But again, you know, he announced that he was leaving uh, about a year ago. So he's been a lame duck for quite a while. Uh, and, and quite frankly, Chairman Goodlatte, is, although he's a good man, uh, I don't think he saw the, the reality that you have to do everything immediately because the other side is running out the clock on you. When he finally started going after Comey, Comey managed to delay this for weeks and weeks. And this is the frustration is you, you have to start quickly because the FBI, the Department of Justice, institutionally knows how to slow you down. Well, you know, I, I got to go back to, I mean, I don't care if Paul Ryan's a lame duck and I don't care if good lad's a nice guy. Uh, Joe Blow watching this show tonight knows that you guys got to get in there and fight. You had the power and you didn't benefit us by it. It was a game where we kept getting punched in the gut by people who were laughing at us, saying one thing and saying it didn't mean what they, what they were saying, like Peter Strzok, Jim Comey, getting out there and saying, oh, no, you know, uh, we have to reopen this investigation, which was nonsense. The Fed is in the Southern District forced him to do it, and the NYPD on the Clinton email. There's so much I could go through, so much my viewers right. know. But I'll tell you, Judge, uh, I'm going to, because you said I, I have nothing to lose, I can say what I believe. Let me tell you something that you do need to make sure your, your viewers understand. Jim Jordan, Mark Meadows, and a team of people who made sure that these here, in Trey Gowdy, made sure that there were hearings four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, and last year. In fact, 
are the reason that Hillary Clinton isn't president and Donald Trump is. If Hillary Clinton had gotten away with it in front of the voters, the fact is she'd be president today. So I want to commend the people I served with who fought against leadership that always wanted to say don't make waves, fought against and made sure the American people, when they went to the polls and voted for and elected Donald Trump, understood they had a choice of a man who was going to do what he said or they're a woman who lied about everything she ever did. Well, Congressman Darrell Issa, I must tell you that, uh, you know, uh, my viewers, and I personally am sad that you're leaving. I think you've done a great job. I don't know if anybody congratulates you in the end or if you even get a watch that says congratulations. But uh, we thank you for your service to Thanks this country. To we thank you for being honest and for doing what you did. Thanks so much thank for being you. with us, Congressman. Thank you. Keep fighting. Oh, no worries. <laughs>